Hello everyone, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3 and we are in Week 2, brought to you by To Enable. Today we are going to be looking at note values. We are also going to be discussing their rests. Note values and rests. In music, we have different note values that help us determine how long a note can be played. Note values also show us the rhythm of the song. So the rhythm of the song, they may say that it's a swing rhythm or maybe it's a straight rhythm, but the note values will help us exactly to know which notes to play and for how long, whether short or long, those are called note values. We also have what we call rests. Remember rests from the previous grades? They are silent equivalents of the note values. So rests can be as long as or as short as note values. Note values can be extended either by a dot or a slur, yet maintaining the same pitch. So, if we have a semi-brief that is a C, then I can add a slur to the next bar, but it must be a C as well because it must maintain the same pitch. Also, note values can be divided either in two or three equal parts. Let us look at the figures below. So, note values we've learned about the semi-brief. Now, it can be extended by a dot. Remember, a semi-brief with a dot, that means that it's going to be semi-brief plus half of its value, which will be a minimum. So, remember that semi-brief with a dot means semi-brief plus minimum. We've also learned about the minimum and the dotted minimum. As I explained, the dot means half of the value. Then we have the crotchet and the dotted crotchet, the quaver and the dotted quaver, the semi-quaver, and we're going to be looking also at the triplet. The rest, we've learned about them. This is what we call a semi-brief rest. Minim rest. Here they show us the crotchet rest and also the dotted crotchet rest. We have the quaver rest and also the semi-quaver rest. Notice how the semi-quaver rest has two flags instead of one. Dotted note values. As I explained in the previous page, dotted note values are the note value plus half its value. Example, dotted minim will equals to minim plus half its value, which will be the crotchet. Then dotted crotchet will be equals to a crotchet plus half its value, which is the quaver. Dotted rests have the equivalent value of dotted notes, as I explained. Use a semi-brief rest always for a whole bar 
rest. So we must remember that it doesn't matter what will the time signature be, but if you are resting for the whole bar, then rather use a semi-brief rest. Dotted notes may never be used over the bar line. Never be used over the bar line. Okay. How do we count dotted notes? Let us look at how we can count our dotted notes. We can see our figure below. It's in treble clef. We see that it has got only one sharp. One sharp means correct. It means G major. Because it even starts on the G and ends on the G. Then we look at the time signature, which is very important to help us count the dotted notes. We are in 4-4 four, four time. In the second bar, we notice, this is the second bar. We notice that because there is a dotted crochet, the length of the note must be up to half the beat of two. There we go. Remember that half a beat will equals to that dot over there. The second note only starts on the end of two. Same in the third bar. This is our third bar. Only it occurs on the third and fourth beat. So there's a dotted crochet on the third beat. And the last note only starts on the end of four. What have we learned? We have learned that even when we have dotted note values, they do not affect the grouping of the bar. Why? Because in four four time, we must have all the notes equal to four crochets. So we understand that the dotted crochet plus a quaver will give us how many crochets? Two crochets plus one, two. That will give us four crochets in a bar. That's why we say the grouping of the bar is not affected. Now we go look at the triplet. What is a triplet? A triplet is a group of three notes. First of all, triple means three. A group of three notes played over a single beat. This is how it looks like. So it looks like this a triplet it will have a small three on top of three beamed quavers this is not only the type of triplet that exists but for this grade we will only look at the quaver triplet it is indicated by a small three as i said on a group of three beamed quavers sometimes it is indicated either with a slur or a bracket over the quavers with a small three. So if you do not see a small three with a slur or a black bracket, then that just means that it's three quavers. But if you see a small three on top of the beamed quavers, then 
it means it's a triplet. The difference between a dotted crotchet and a quaver triplet, remember the dotted crotchet, we may divide it into three quavers, is that a dotted crotchet is counted as three equal quavers in a bar. Ne? And then the triplet is played over one crotchet beat. If we look at figure A and figure B, it shows us exactly how the triplet is written out. Let's look at the figure A. How many beats do we have in a bar? It's a 4-4 four, four time, so we must have 4 beats. So the first triplet will be the first beat. The second triplet will be the second beat. And then we have 2 equal quavers which will make up one beat and then a crotchet which makes us which makes one crotchet so it's four beats in a bar also in figure b it shows exactly how quavers are placed two quavers for the first beat the triplet for the second beat Four semi-quavers for the third beat and two quavers, lastly, for the fourth beat. There are many ways to count the triplet. Below are just some examples. So there are different ways of counting the triplet. But I like this one at the bottom where you actually say the word triplet. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.